Joining us live after a rather large evening down at Duke University. The Duke Blue Devils were three and nine. Okay? Mm. Then they hire this defense coordinator for Texas AM. They go nine and four. Damn. Now in his second year as a head coach, they're one and oh, with a win over the Clemson Tigers, 28-7 last night, where people are calling it the biggest win in the history of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Duke Blue Devils football team, Mike Elko. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, fellas? I got to get you to be my hype man, Pat. Bro, you don't need me, pal. <laughs> the, the numbers in your team are speaking for themselves. What a win last night, coach. Yeah. What a win. Yeah, it was, it was a heck of a night. It was a, uh, obviously for our program, that was something that was, you know, truly special. And, and obviously to beat those guys in the opener, but just uh, to have the environment we had, to have the turnout we had for Duke football from where this place was, um, before I got here, um, you know, to have the, the scene of us rushing the stadium and uh, just to have our kids get to experience what, what college football should be like, um, that was pretty cool. Well, not only after the game, before the game, you guys came out. This looks so cool. Yeah. Hey, I don't know how cool – if you know how cool you guys look yeah. coming out, you look super cool. <laughs> like the team – Well, that's – Go ahead. It's the one thing we can control, right? We got to look good to play good. Amen. So let's start dying into that. You play good. Obviously, they pay good. We talked to Dion yesterday about the turnaround of Colorado and him finding his people. 86, obviously, new players. They get a big time win over TCU. You had a similar flip with Duke last year. They're three and nine, then you go nine and four. How do you turn a program around? What is it? What is the key piece in your eyes in what you had to do to get that place believing not only the team, but the entire university almost? Yeah, I, I think we were in a little bit different situation. I think we had a lot of kids who um, maybe just needed a little bit different path and direction. And uh, I think what we discovered really quick was we had a lot of really good kids um, that were really willing to do a lot to, to change the direction of this program and kind of change the perception of who they were. And so we were able to take the group that we had, um, give them a direction, mold them. I think we made some tremendous changes to strength and conditioning, to nutrition. Uh, everybody who has come through here has said we look like a bigger, faster, stronger football team than we were before we got here. And um, we've just been able to take the kids that we had and instill confidence in them. And I think that's just kind of bled through the entire community, universe, and everything hell yeah it's been fun to watch go ahead aj where do you go from here i know like you hear coaches talk about handling success that sometimes that's the toughest thing now you guys have this big program changing win now what does it look like what's the rest of this week look like for you and the rest of your team yeah i, I tried to retire last night but they wouldn't let me so now it's uh <laughs> now it's about trying to get going on a short now we um <laughs> listen we 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 talk a lot around here about like what it takes to be success and the steps that you have to go through. And, you know, everybody wants to pat us on the back for every small victory along the way. But um, I think we're really truly here for the long haul and we're here to build something special. I think our kids are all in with that. And so, you know, we, we had a great win last night, but you know, like every coach, there's things on that film that need to get corrected. Um, there's big opportunities coming down the road for us and um, you know, for us to get where we really want to go this year and make this a season not a game um you know we got some things we got to fix and get better at so we'll go to work at that tomorrow and, and get ready to play again on a short turnaround this weekend top of the acc looks very solid this year i mean it's kind of happening everywhere in this modern nil world in transfer portal world we assume that every program that is going to have success is going to utilize it duke not easy to get into right that's a tough place has that been a problem for you or, or how do you go about recruiting i guess to find your guys that can be duke football players yeah, I, I think we've used it the right way. I think I think the first thing we talk about all the time with the transfer portal around here is retaining our guys and keeping our guys out of it. And that's something that we were we were really successful at. You know, we have a starting quarterback uh, who's extremely talented, and and you know we had to make sure he stayed at Duke. We've got a left tackle who's extremely talented, and and there's a bunch of other guys like that. Um, that that it was really important that we got them to believe and buy into what we were capable of doing here. And that's where it started. And then we were able to go out and add some pieces. You know, we had we had two corners out there that, that played at a really high level at, at the University of Miami and at Texas A&M a couple of years ago and had been dealing with some injuries. Uh, we had a kid start at right tackle for us who had been a multi-year starter at Stanford. And so we can plug and play and find some guys in some different areas that can come in and help. But, you know, by and large, we're going to be homegrown and we're going to develop our culture through our own recruits. Hey, Bill on Stone. I mean, that's kind of how the greatest teams kind of figure it out. You mentioned your quarterback there, Riley Leonard. Quite a hello to the world last <laughs> night for a lot of people that maybe 
maybe didn't know him. I appreciate you saying, hey, we got to keep this guy here and figure out how to do that. Whenever you look at him as a player in the big picture, and obviously, Scumbag didn't do his homework. Yeah, that's right. Ridiculous. Scumbag didn't do his homework last night. I, I don't know if you know that. Hey, get his ass running. You know, I got a big, didn't turn in his homework on time. Had to do that. This guy's special, though. Huh? That, I mean, he made some plays last night that I think made a lot of NFL teams go like, Wait a minute, you got a Duke kid. That means Duke brain. Mm -hmm. And you got some real moxie. And he, yeah. he was able to lead a team to be Clemson. So behind the scenes, probably the right guy. What do we not know about Riley to, the, to those of us that maybe were just introduced to him in a big way last night? Yeah, he's got an amazing ability to up his level at the exact right moments. If you go back and you look at last year, you know, his three biggest games for us last year were against – Jaden Daniels at Kansas, Drake May at North Carolina, and Sam Hartman at Wake. And, and those were the three biggest quarterbacks we played against uh, last year. And, and then, you know, last night coming into this stage, you know, we knew he was going to find a way to make some plays for us. And, and obviously that run he had where he broke a bunch of tackles and went gallivanting down the sideline for a touchdown, man, that, that obviously changed the momentum of that game in a big way. And, you know, that's just who he is. He can make plays with his feet. He can make plays with his arm. Um, and he just has a tremendous moxie about when to step this level up and make the right play. Yeah, he looked cool, bro. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That <laughs> looked the part, too. Not only, like, yeah. everything just – and I'm like, we haven't talked about this guy at all. Hey, nobody's talking no, he's about a, Go ahead. He's an interesting kid. He's, he's a 3-9 GPA. He's quiet as can be off the field, man. But when he gets on the field, he's got a swagger and a confidence about him that, like, you know, you'll run through a wall for that kid. And uh, that's unique. It really is. And he's a unique special kid. Like Luke Keekley used to have. Mm -hmm. Remember they yeah, talked yep. about him. Yeah. It was like going into a phone booth. This guy's actually Clark Kenny. He has glasses on, super nerd. <laughs> then you get him on the that's field. Him. Ah! <laughs> it's, a, it's an incredible – that's a great thing to have because that 3-9 GPA means, especially at the quarterback position, I can handle – Everything. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to yep. see how the NFL people start chit-chatting about Riley, especially after last night. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, Coach, obviously you're from, from Jersey, so you're you're a hard nose, and then you went to Penn, and you were a ball hawk and hard hit and safety there, and you've always been on the defensive side of the ball as, as a yeah. coach. Um, and you always had great defenses at, at Texas A&M, and then you came here and turned around the defense pretty quickly. Is it is it scheme, or is it like last night you could just tell, like, you guys have 11 guys in the picture at all times. What is the, the key to success that you've always had great defenses? Yeah, it, it's probably a combination of, of both of what you said about me. I, I think uh, to me, it starts with toughness and great. I, I think there's some intangibles. At Duke, defense that at you Duke. Have to have. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. At Duke. That's got to. Yeah. Hey, it never changes. The game of football is the game of football, no matter where you're at. And, uh, you know, if you want to play good defense, you got to play with toughness and grit and, and all that stuff, and you got to have it. But then I think um, maybe a little bit within our scheme that's unique and how we utilize our pieces and try to put kids uh, in positions to be successful and maybe have a little bit more of a, an evolving type scheme that can fit our personnel uh, as opposed to just a blank playbook that's got to travel and, and we've got to recruit personnel to fit the scheme. You know, we can kind of make this scheme fit around the types of players we have. And I think that's something we've been able to do over the years pretty successfully. Go ahead, AJ. Is that something that, that great coaches can do where you, you don't have to be stuck? Like, hey, this is what we do and we're, what you got to plug. You, we're going to plug you into one of these spots. Like, is that especially, I guess, the future of college football too to where, hey, we're going to recruit people and then bring them in and see what they do best and try to craft everything around them? Yeah, I, I think it's maybe a little bit of both. But what I would say with me is is it's my background. You know, I was – my first defensive coordinator job was the United States Merchant Marine Academy. Then I went to Hofstra. Then I went to Bowling Green. And, you know, those were places where you had to take your pieces that you had and figure out how to best utilize them to be successful. Um, it wasn't – I didn't cut my teeth in the – SEC where we can go get every five star and come in and make him, you know what I mean? So I think, I think some of that just shaped me, you know what I mean? I think then there's nothing wrong with either philosophy in my opinion. Um, but you know, I never was really at that place as I was learning how to put this defensive scheme together. Um, and then for me, as I got to the places where we had the elite talent, you know, still was able to evolve it the right way. And um, I think the Texas A&M kids really believed in what we did. Um, and so it was interesting to just kind of see it all come together at each level that I've been able to do it. They felt your effect whenever you lost or left. And then Duke obviously felt your immediate arrival. Three and nine, nine and four, one and no. Oh. Ty has a question for you about all that. Yeah, Coach, just curious. When you first took the Duke job, was part of the appeal like, hey, I have the opportunity to go to 
maybe the most historically strong blue blood, uh, blue blood basketball school and like actually turn it into a football program. We all know the kind of like boosters and excitement they have around the basketball team, but then you turn things around and start winning and people get excited about Duke football. Like, was that part of the appeal when you first took the job or no? Yeah, I, I think it was two things. I think one, I think Duke is unique. And, and in this world of, you know, you mentioned it, the NIL, the transfer portal, we feel like Duke has a little something different that we can sell, you know, and, and we can get kids here to buy into what Duke stands for and what can do what Duke can do for them beyond the game. And I think that helps us with roster control a little bit. And then you look at, okay, well, then can you be successful? And that's where the basketball thing comes in. Um, we have a lot of programs and basketball is obviously the, the biggest one um, that competed at a really high national level. And, and when you see an athletics program that knows how to support a national premier program, then you believe that, okay, if I can just go in and get them on board with some of the things we need to tweak and change about football, you know, hopefully we can get this thing up and over. And I think we've got great alignment with our administration right now uh, and getting a lot of things done for these kids. Yeah, I'd say it's working out. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I think, yeah. I think yeah. it's working. I think yeah. it's working, Coach. Pac-Man Jones has something for you. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask the question, how hard is it to get these guys out the transport portal? You say uh, you like to keep your guys. Dion went and got 78 brand new bodies. Um, how hard is it getting these guys out the transport portal? And who had a bigger bigger week? Did, you, did the Dukies have a bigger week or did Colorado have a big <laughs> week this week? Hey, listen, we're, we're far enough from Colorado that they can have a big week and so can we. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm saying out of that conversation. But, um, no, I, I, we can get kids in. Obviously, Duke's a little bit of a different place in terms of academics and, and who we can get into school. But um, we don't have any – bigger issues getting kids out of the transfer portal. Um, I just think it's different. I, I think, um, you know, I think I think what, what Dion took over versus what I took over were just two different situations. We had enough kids here that we could build around and win with, and, and so we just decided to do that instead. Hey, new AP top 25. You guys are 21. Colorado is 22. So wow. there you I go. Think, I think. Duke wins we did. I think you're yeah. – <laughs> Hell yeah. Great week, uh, Con uh, Connor has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned the team playing with toughness and grit, and then you also mentioned how, you know, you want to hold on to the guys that you guys recruit and you don't want to, you know, have them go into the portal. Is it hard to balance that when you're trying to, you know, instill grit and toughness into a team? Like in practice, is it difficult to coach kids really hard while also trying to understand, like, hey, we still love this kid and want him to be around and we don't want him to leave? Yeah, I, I think a lot of that is relationship driven. I, I think if kids these days know you care about them and know they can trust you, um, you can coach them in ways that they know you're developing them to be the best they can become. If if it's just, uh, you know, some of that old school mentality of like, do what I said just because I said it, I think uh, that doesn't go quite as well <laughs> nowadays. But I think we've got really good relationships in this building and, and we spend a lot of time getting to know these kids and spending a lot of time with them and i think that allows us the opportunity to kind of push their buttons because they know it's coming from the right spot in the right place coach what a time it was when Google didn't exist. Motherfuckers used to just say shit. Yep. You know what I mean? It was just be, hey, you didn't even have to know. You didn't even know if it was right. No. Yeah, you're from New Jersey. I mean, I couldn't even imagine Pittsburgh the same way. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, why does this happen? Just a matter of fact <laughs> answer. Uh -huh. That is yeah. so wrong and cannot be checked. And then just go about your life. It's a little we'll different it. now, yeah. Coach. It's a little different now. No, you got to be a little smarter with these guys. They can get a lot of information really quick. Yeah. And you lose all credibility immediately. You remember what that? Yeah. You, did you hear what this dipshit? Mm. <laughs> that ain't right. Check it out. That ain't right at all. It's right here on my. See, I can't listen to anything you say for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, you talked about nutrition and the weight room and everything. And obviously in college, the weight room is the place that you're Man. living. Yeah. I mean, that is yeah. obviously a huge piece of it. What type of lifting we do? We got Olympic lifting. We what, what is the move and what's the nutrition? You got shakes and smoothies for everybody. And is that just yeah. standard operating procedure now at D1 football? Yeah, I, I think uh, from a lifting standpoint, we're Olympic lifting, and I, I think we're we're trying to move weight down there and build confidence through the amount of weight that we can do. And so, Hell yeah. um, you know, our kids know that when they go in and they work out, they're they're going to work out hard. And and I think we've been pretty well documented on social media with what we're trying to do down there. And we hired Dave Feely from the University of Miami, and he's done a phenomenal job of just kind of building the culture down there. And, and the gains that we've made have been phenomenal. And I think from a nutrition standpoint, I don't think we're doing anything special. I think we were behind the times at Duke. I don't think we were 
doing it the way Notre Dame was or Texas A&M was. And I think that was something I noticed immediately was if, if we want to have a power five football team and we want to compete in this league against teams like Clemson, you know, we've got to do a much better job of exactly what you said, the shakes, the nutrition, the constantly monitoring how our kids are eating training table. Um, you know, again, nothing that's not, commonplace amongst the elite programs, but something we had to do to become an elite program or, or to challenge to become an elite program. Speaking of being an elite program, man, this picture from last night after the win, those fans could not wait. They were standing on the side. They were standing yeah. in the in the end zone yeah. pretty much like, man, we got three scores. Yeah. We're up by, we're absolutely dominant. This is a beautiful thing, I think, for a coach who's trying to rebuild an entire culture. What did you tell the team afterwards in the locker room whenever, you know, the quiet kind of finally came after this huge win? Yeah, I mean, I, I just told them it's a testament to what people can do when they come together and they're willing to work for something. I, I think that's one of the things that maybe gets lost a little bit in society today with with how much gets put on social media and how much emphasis gets put on what people say about you. You can still just work really, really hard and, and change who you are and change what you're all about. And I think our kids have done that. And I think last night was a was a huge testimony to that on the national stage. Hey, you've done a great job down there, Coach. We appreciate the hell out of you taking time to chit-chat with us. And uh, they're calling it the biggest win in the history of the program, people are saying. Wow. Well, now i got to go back to work and make sure we don't have the biggest <laughs> loss in the history of the <laughs> week. So it's a good idea. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's always great to see you guys. Hey, you too. We appreciate the hell out of you, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Mike Elko. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, we got another game yeah, coming. Yeah. So yeah. let's go ahead and talk about uh, let's, that one too. Let's, let's bounce. Let's not bounce Don yeah. uh, in everybody's. <laughs>